back to another episode of the Top Flight Podcast. You know what it is. You know what we're here to do. Back on screen today, ready to bring you another midweek episode. This time, I'm with my G, Eric, the stat and topic contributor of the Top Flight Podcast. And we also got D-Bands, Danny Bands, D-Exotic, my G. Uh, what's up? Starting off with you, Eric. How are you doing, mate? I'm hurting, man. I'm hurting for what you had said with Real Madrid. Uh, I just... I don't know, man. I, my whole week has been ruined because of what you said. I'm just, I'm just, I got depression, bro. I'm just hurt. I'm hurt, man. But let's get to the Austin talk, man. I can't wait to get you guys won. You guys won. Uh, we are hurt. The Madrid fan base right now is is down bad, but we're never down and out. And anybody that knows Danny Bands knows that he's a Real Madrid fan. So I want to bring him in on this, mate. How are you doing, Danny? Eric's down, I'm down on that, but hey, Austin won, so we got something on that, So, but how are you doing, mate? Hey, I'm just glad to be back here in the podcast, and uh, I was doing good. Uh, yesterday, I was very upset during the, the day after seeing Madrid get spanked by Man City, but fortunately, Austin FC took the W, so that made up for it, so it's real good. I'm doing fine right now. I'm doing good. You know, fuck it. Copa del Rey, it's good enough for me, like I said a couple months ago. You did say that. You did say that. And you made sure to go back and retweet that and screenshot yep. it and send it to me. So yep. made sure to, to, to get your point <laughs> across, mate. Uh, I want to send a shout out to the boy. Shout out to Primo, who has an indoor game tonight, Thursday at Ooh. 740. So right now he's on the pitch, y'all. Primo is on the pitch. He probably has a hat trick by now or an assist. I mean, that guy on the field, Primo, menace. Man, this. Uh, shout out to Bali. Shout out to B, who's going to be editing this as well. Shout out to Norbis. And uh, Tony Photos, getting to work out there, taking those pics. Uh, we got a good episode tonight. Obviously, like uh, Danny Bands and Eric noted, we're going to talk about the Austin FC win in Seattle. Interesting game there. I mean, did anybody expect it? Not that many people did. We got to be real on that. Uh, a lot of things to talk about there. Uh, but first, you just got to plug in the pod, Top Flight Podcast. Tell your friends, tell your family, coworkers. Give us a follow, subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast on the audio platform, Spotify, Apple, whatever, you know. And also, I want to send a shout out to the We're Austin TV website, the writers, Football Critic, My G, Scott, My G, JC, especially, uh, getting to work. Really good articles being posted on there, the Run It Back series, the What You Need to Knows, and every now and then we get a little treat, put it in there for y'all. So shout out to the writers, uh, WeAreAustinTV.com. So let's get into the episode. Austin FC 2-1 over the Seattle Sounders. First, we get into the overall thoughts on the match. Uh, big ups to Finley, Ethan Finley, who, along with Coach Josh Wolf, are in the team of the week. Big news there. Shout out to them. Ethan Finley getting into the 50-50. We're going to talk about that later on in the episode. But uh, real quick, overall thoughts. Danny, I want to get your quick thoughts on the match. 2-1 uh, win, mate. What can you tell me real quick? Um, I can tell you that uh, Stuber had a hell of a game. And so did Ethan Finley. Either one could have won out of the match. And fortunately, we got to a W, you know, and Zardis scored too. So good things are coming, you know, and... Um, I saw people saying that why is not Maxi in the lineup? Like that was a huge question. Like why he he was in, he didn't even fly with them, right? Yeah, he did not travel. Yeah, he, he didn't did travel. travel. So like people were saying, oh, did Wolf lose the locker room? But it didn't look like he lost the locker room in the field. So that tells you something. Wolf really Wolf, Wolf is onto something, bro. Really interesting point there, D. Actually, I wonder who uh, said that. Bali. It was Bali. Call him out. Call his little ass out. My G Bali, I love you, mate. I love you 100%. Uh, Eric, just like I asked Danny, real quick, your overall thoughts before we get into, I guess, the highlights of the match, the main talking points. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, watched the game, and I, I thought it was, for me personally, I hope nobody gives this, like, no offense to nobody, but to me, it was boring football. Boring, sideways, typical football. I guess everybody has their opinions. Go ahead. Go ahead. It was a, it was just relying on the crosses. Uh, and personally to me, Stuber, what a keeper. What a keeper. Those saves, key saves. If it wasn't for that guy, this this, this Seattle team would have beaten y'all. And it, it would have been, uh, oh, my gosh, a, a nightmare for you guys. Uh, but he's, you know, he is him. Son he is him. San Stuber. I like that. I like that he is him. I do want to say this, though, on that point that you had. Stuber does make some really good saves. 
But also, some of the Seattle forwards, Herbert in particular, wasteful, bro. So many chances, wasteful on the ball at the very end. Well, actually, you know what? Let's get into uh, the next thing that I have here, which is the uh, main highlights of the match. Minute 34, Stuver, big save. Funny that we start off with that. Big save from uh, Brad Stuver, minute 34. Uh, we do have to note that Lil Bison was burned on that play, a little bit like Julio Cascante versus Dallas last match. Uh, and what I did notice was that Bison actually takes off with a bit of a, a head start than the uh, Seattle forward, and he still gets to the ball first. Luckily, Stuver learned from the goal against uh, Ferreira. Uh, last week or last match against Ferreira, he slots it between Stuver's legs. This game, Seattle, the forward tries to do a bit of the same thing, but Stuver is quicker to get down, gets his foot down, stops it, gets on the ball, and then, boom, what happens after that is very interesting. But before uh, I go on to that, I want to get your thoughts, Eric, real quick. Since you are a keeper, mate, what, are you, what was your thoughts on that minute 34 Brad Stuver save, mate? It was great, but when the commentators were right. He saw the ball going a little f at fast pace coming toward his, so he kind of second guessed himself. And whenever he stopped and dropped down, that was a great reaction from him. And and just that that those free kick saves when he just like ball like you know he's like a little volleyball like whoop come on and over the crossbar. I don't know, man, you guys, oh, what a keeper, man, what a keep. I mean, to to have a team, an Austin FC team with a keeper like that, and also your Austin FC two team has a great keeper and lost. Man, that just says that you guys beautiful. I like that point, man. I really do like that point. Even though we have missed a bit on our backup keepers, uh, Andrew Tarbell was a bit of a miss. He now plays for the Houston Dynamo. We haven't seen Bersano. We haven't seen Bersano, but I'm sure that he will uh, come to play for Austin FC here, here soon. He's always uh, traveling with the team, but he'll get his moment for sure. I want to go on to the next thing that happened. Right after that play, Stuber makes a important save, key save, minute 35, we go down the field. It's a Finley goal. Ethan Finley opens up the ball to Gallagher. It's it's very interesting how Ethan Finley starts this play up really by himself, or he starts this up first. Ethan Finley opens up the ball to Mr. John Gallagher, who crosses the ball maybe a bit too hard, or I guess to nobody, I guess you can say. But the ball runs across the face of the goal, lands to uh, Rigoni, who has to get it. It's at his feet. Lunkovic calls for it. He, he opens it up to Mr. Adam Lunkovic. At Adam Lunkovic puts it into the box. Who's there? Ethan Finley. Doesn't waste any time. Not even three seconds on the ball. Shoots it. Slots it home. Beautiful finish. Danny Benz, I want to get your thoughts on this finish, mate, to make it 1-0. Ethan Finley, great finish, bro. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I went to Mr. Tramps with Nolvis to go watch the game. And unfortunately, they had trivia night. So when that <laughs> happened, there was no sound. But I was watching the game, and I saw. I thought the play was dead, like whenever Gallagher crossed it. But then yeah. they crossed uh, who was it? Um, Rigoni gets the ball and he opens it to Lunkovist. Yeah, Lunkovist, and then he gives it to Finley, and I see him score, and I just start shouting, bro. Like, I'm like, vamos! I mean, Novis like are the only ones, like couple like guys in the back. Yeah. And then that's when they they turn the sound on, so they're like, okay. oh, these guys are here to watch the game, so they put the sound on. But that was a that was a good goal, you know that that got me hyped. I was excited, and you know. It would have been better if I watched it with sound during the time, but, but, you know. it is what it is, mate. It is yeah. what it is. It, it was, night. it was a goal to definitely shout, uh, especially uh, if for the one zero. But not only just that, Ethan Finley for sure celebrated it a bit more himself because it did, um, it did mean as the. It didn't mean a lot for him because he was on his way. Or I'm just, that that moment was uh, was the one that got him into that legendary. 50-50 uh, club, or was it the assist to John Zizard? It's not clear on that because he has been uh, banging in goals. But Ethan Finley, we're going to get into that legendary moment for him here in a bit. But right after that, minute 48, Radovanovic with a crucial, crucial header save. As Seattle whips it into the in, into the box to Herber, who thinks he has a goal, but Radovanovic overpowers him in the air. 100% aerial duels for him last night. Uh, Eric, your thoughts on this, mate? Radovanovic was pretty, pretty uh, clutch last night. Your thoughts, mate, real quick. Solid, solid performance, but it's just the first performance, first game they started, so you don't know. You're you raw human, you can have a great game, and then you can flop, you know, you, you don't know. So, uh, you know, calma, calma. But I did see the performance, and he did have some clutch saves whenever he was on a one-on-one -on -one from a through ball. I think it was in the second half, and he stretches his leg out for, you know, for him to kick it away and, you know, for them to get a corner. 
he 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 really he really did uh impress me in today's game. Hundred percent, man. Big ups to Mr. to uh, Radovanovic for you know being the the player that he is and also for that performance that he had last night. Shout out to him. Also moving on, fit a minute fifty six. Zardes goal. Finley crosses the ball. A uh, bit of a floater to Zardes, who meets it beautifully with his head, bro. He just kisses, chef's kiss off his forehead. Boom, bangs it in. It's 2-0. 2-0, and we're going absolutely insane. I mean, Austin FC ahead at Seattle, 2-0 against all odds. Who would have freaking thought? And then who was it? Jazzy freaking Zardes. After, every, after all the drama, after everything that was said, after the salaries, whenever they came out, everybody was dogging him. Everything was just going out the window. Shit hit the fan. But Zardes calms everything down. And I actually respect Zardes for the celebration that he had. It was a super chill celebration. He could have been arrogant. He could have been something silly. You know, he could have done something silly like a... Like, like Rigoni. A, Rigoni. I, <laughs> you know, but that was just like a... That was his thing. That's that's not silly. That was just his thing. You know, whenever he just... Does, that's what he yeah. does. But Zardes could have done something silly, you know, because especially after all the criticism that he was receiving... But to me, that was a celebration that was saying, man, you know what? I'm not even adhering to the noise that's coming in from the outside. I'm focused on my football. And Josh Wolf even noted this in the press conference. He said that he's not worried about Zardes. He knows that his perseverance will always take him far. And he knows that Zardes mentally is very strong. So uh, let's see if uh, Wolf is right on that one. But Danny, I want to get your your thoughts on that Zardes goal. Uh, because it was a beautiful cross from Ethan Finley, mm-hmm. who had a really great match, legendary match, man of the match performance by him but yeah. your thoughts on the goal by Zardes mate oh it's just very unexpected you know I'm glad Zardes finally got his goal and hopefully he could keep scoring more you know um this just shows that uh just don't give up on their players bro they'll eventually show up and uh it's crazy because you know Moxie he wasn't even he didn't even travel so Zardes did his thing and it's a good thing that he scored and hope Hopefully, it could bring more, you know. You never know. Probably, you know, some players just probably need to just break that seal, you know. Like Rigoni, he he scored, and he's playing a lot better now. You know, it might stats may say otherwise, but he we see him hustle for the ball and stuff. So, we'll see what happens next game. That's true. Redes also, another guy got that goal, but, you know, he did get that red card, but he, he has been card, playing. Yeah. He has been playing like he's inspired, I guess you could say. Uh, I want to move on to one of the next things that happened in the match, minute 78. We got a note, Seattle goal. Freddie Montero gets his goal. Vison is the one that tries to make the first tackle. He misses that first toe poke. The ball kind of, you know, it's kind of spilling, kind of spills, bounces it in the box. Lima and Alex Ring are also tied into that. The ball lands to uh, Herbert, if I'm not mistaken, who lays it off to the incoming player, who is Freddie Montero. Finish it off one touch. Doesn't even think about it, bro. He makes it 2-1. And there's about 10 minutes left in this game after they make it 2-1. And a lot of us in Austin, and I'm, I'm sure the Austin fans that traveled over there, they were thinking to themselves like, yo, we better not lose this lead. They better not tie it up. Stuber, come in for come in clutch for us. And that's exactly what happened next, mate. A minute 84, huge save by Stuber on uh, Jordan Morris. Long ball comes into Roldan who's wide open because we're playing a uh, interesting new formation in the back. It's three in the back, and that's why Roldan receives the ball so easy. Nobody's coming to him. Gallagher finally starts to make that pressure, but by then he already crossed the ball. Morris, who is beautifully positioned in between two of our center backs, gets the really just like a striker's finish, bro. You just got, got to get a touch on it. But Stuver, bro, Stuver, oh, my God. San Stuver makes the beautiful save. And it's still two to one. That was the moment. That was Seattle's moment to make it two to two. But Stuver, again, Eric, I want to bring you in on this, mate. Stuver, clutch for Austin FC. You were saying that he should have been man of the match. But, I mean, Ethan Finley got it rightfully so. But what are your thoughts on this save, mate? It was minute 84, and Stuver keeps it two to one. Yeah, I was I actually watched I watched both uh, both translations of the, of the game. And on the Spanish version, the, both commentators were going back on who was their man of the match for the game. One of them was Alex Ring, and the other one, uh, Balboa. Balboa, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys know him. He was going for Stuber, and I was going for Stuber as well because those performances, and that, that performance, it, it, it's like uh, Courtois-Liverpool last year's final. Like, clutch. Your team needs you. You got to be there, and he just clutched it, and 
Oh my gosh, man! That man is an MVP. He needs an he needs an award at the end of the season. For for me, he needs an award at the end of the season. Please, Austin, give him an award. He deserves it. De Gea, go give him your Golden Glove, man. Give it to him. He deserves it. Go give it to him right now, please. May May May. Uh, De Gea giving it to uh, Stuber Golden Glove. I mean, that'll be that'll be interesting, mate. Very interesting on that. Uh, so, but yes, it was a big save by Brad Stuver, keeping it 2-1 in the dying minutes of the match. Austin FC has probably got to build him some kind of statue after he is done with with uh, this club. Statue of Stuver outside Q2? I'm down, bro. Build the statue, bro. Build the statue. Uh, minute 92, Bruin chance. Bruin comes into the game. Bruin gets a ball in no man's land. But he sets himself up, bro. I mean, it was just a very interesting touch that he had. It kind of reminded me of, like, Luis Suarez. Bro, he kind of just like sets himself up out of nowhere. Uh, and then he finds himself in the box, bro. And you think that maybe he's going to cut back. He's going to set himself up. Maybe wait for his opponent. Uh, maybe wait for his teammate to come in behind his opponent at that at that far post. Easy pass on goal. But you see him take a shot. And then it goes wide and over the bar. And you're like, ah, great run, buddy. But the finish could have been better. Uh, Eric, I see you laughing, mate. Could Bruin have done better on that? Most definitely, man. When you saw him got that, like, I guess he gassed out, but I don't know. He gave, when every time about like Luis Suarez, you remind me of that, that PSG game where he nutmegs David Luis and he just swats it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. no, no, I think he like, he kind of stuttered. He kind of like, he felt those footsteps on the turf of the defender coming behind him. And he was like, uh, what, what do I do? And just blasted it. Yeah. Eh, well, moment could have been too big for him, mate. But uh, Will Bruin, Credit to him for making that uh, making that chance for for himself because honestly he could have just ran into the corner and done nothing with it but he you know powers through goes to the goal and makes a chance for us you know if, if he could have gotten it on goal it would have been amazing if that would have been three one for Austin FC but uh, I want to go into the lineup talk real quick the lineup we had Brad Stuver in goal Radovanovic who had a, a, a important game to say the least because a lot of people are going to be talking about his. His first start for Austin FC for a while, especially against the opponent who it was. But we're, we're going to get to him here in a bit. Radovanovic is on there. Like I said, Lil Vicenin in the center at center back. Alex Rink, who's still playing CB. And judging by going off of the press conference, Josh Wolf doesn't really hint that he's going anywhere for, for right now. Looks like he's going to be there for a while. Uh, Adam Lunkovis, who played fantastic. I think he had a really good game. He's been building really good games uh, a lot. I mean, sorry, not a lot, but recently lately. Danny Pereira, we uh, were talking about him before we started this pod, and we were saying how Danny Pereira is such a jam, bro, and how Josh Wolf in the press conference, he was saying that they get frequent calls from abroad, out, you know, overseas, Europe. We're talking top flight. We're talking top flight leagues, most likely, right? Uh, but Josh Wolf saying that there's interest for Danny Pereira from all over the world. So that doesn't surprise us one bit. Danny Benz, maybe you want to add something on uh, Danny Pereira getting uh, calls from all over the world. Man, I just hope he just, oh, man. I mean, it'll be nice to see him leave, like, to a bigger club, but he should leave whenever we're ready for him to leave, you know? Like, when we already have, like, his replacement, which is going to be very hard to find, you know? Owen, Danny Pereira's... Owen, Owen, or, or yeah, maybe, or maybe yeah. both. Maybe sell both. Or both leave? Oh, At my God. At the same time, that would, are, that would crush us. What are we going to do in the midfield, bro? You know we would have saying? to, like, we, you know, we would have to see if we get Sofiane stepping up, but you know, we'll deal with that problem when we get there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, mate. I'll go, I'll go. Yeah. Moving on to Johan Valencia, who started this game. He has been starting recently because of circumstances, especially how things have been unfolding for Austin FC. But he's been playing well. He's been playing pretty good. Uh, he has been quietly performing well. I know that people are happy with him, even though he doesn't get the praise as 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 other players uh, do. He doesn't really talk to the media that much either. He's just a, a Spanish-speaking player, and our media is dominantly English. So John Balins is maybe somebody that we don't really get to hear from much. But uh, I know that if you know he had he had a chance to talk to the media, he'd be pretty happy with the way that he's playing because he's finally getting minutes. And if you're a player. You want minutes, and that's what Johan Valencia is finally getting, and I think he's been taking advantage of the time that he has been getting on the pitch, so big ups to him. Uh, moving forward, we had John Gallagher, who is that guy right now, still top scorer for Austin FC. It's good for him. I'm happy for him, but that's not the way things should be for this club, for a club that wants to win trophies. Uh, converted fullback or wing or whatever you want to say, Gallagher, a guy that plays in the position that he's been playing should not be our 
top scorer. It should be one of our strikers. It should be Drusi, maybe even Fago Rigoni also. Looking at him, 100%. But right now, John Gallagher, big ups to him. He is taking on that role, so he is carrying us numbers-wise. But good performance from him, good shift yesterday, uh, defending Austin FC, defending that lead at all times. So proud of Mr. John Gallagher. Uh, going up top, Ethan Finley, who we are going to give his praise here to in a bit. He has a great match, gets his goal, and an assist, mate. And an assist. Big ups to Ethan Finley, who had a, uh, I'd say, a regular game, maybe. I don't know. Maybe some fans are going to think that that's a bit of a hot take. But Ethan Finley's a guy that can probably score you a goal out of nowhere. Give him space. He will finish, bro. Give him space. Give him a chance. He will finish. He's going to put in a, a good cross. What he did against Seattle, to me, is not out of the ordinary. Give him space. He's going to finish. You know what I'm saying? He's going to put in a good cross. He knows how to put in a, a pretty good cross. But to me, Ethan Finley yesterday, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. What was great for him was the stats that he accomplished, in my opinion, I guess you could say. Uh, Jazzy Sardis was at striker. That was the one of the main talking points also. And uh, Emiliano Rigoni, who uh, it was going to be starting 24-7. We knew that that, that that was going to be one of the first names on the team sheet in Seattle. But, uh, Eric, I want to get your thoughts on the names that we just uh, read off of the starting 11. What was your thoughts on the team that Joshua fielded last night against uh, Seattle, mate? Odd, but for some reason, that oddness clicked. It clicked. Okay. okay. And, and, and it's, it's, it's weird, but... I don't know, like, yeah, I guess rotation it was done and, and it somehow went to work and were the big dogs in Seattle. Maybe that should have happened against LAFC or I don't know, but <laughs> mm, calma. Okay. I, I mean it was cool. I, I liked it. I liked it. I'm I'm happy that uh Valencia's getting his confidence back. I, I was surprised that um Pagundes came on in the eighty ninth minute. And but I'm happy that I mean he's back. Fagundes is back now. All we're waiting for is 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 big man Driusi. On Fagundes, real quick, because uh, there's not much on uh, Fagundes' game. Uh, you know, there's not much in the notes on Fagundes' game. But I do want to point this out. There was an opportunity for Fagundes to be one on one against the Seattle goalkeeper, but Rigoni fails to see him, fails to recognize that it was a clear wall, a clear one-two play. Fagu gives it to. Uh, Emmy and Emmy instead of giving it right back to Fago turns around and just closes out the angle for even himself mate and the chance goes goes uh, begging right there I had a lot of people hit me up there saying yo did you see that did you see that Rigoni completely missed Fagundes what the hell what the heck but it is what it is the chance goes begging and thankfully you know we win the game two to one still so uh, big ups there uh, Danny do you have any thoughts on uh, Fagundes you know maybe you can maybe mention something about him returning I did tweet out on the Weirs TV account I said welcome back Fagundes and it got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of traction a lot of engagement on that tweet because fans are happy to see him back he's one of the fan favorites mate yeah well I'm just glad to see him <laughs> back because he's been gone for quite a while. And he was he he was Mr. Austin FC before Juicy. Came no, he in. is, mate. He is. Oh Mr. yeah, Austin yeah, FC. he is. He is. You know. He right is. Here. Yeah, I'm glad to see him back. Hopefully, he gets some more minutes. Probably rest him in, in Toronto. Probably bring him in like the 80th minute or something. Depends how we're doing. And let him play the the match against uh, Chicago Fire. I want to see him like probably play more than 45 minutes if he's ready. If he's ready. If he's ready, you know, because Wolf yeah. is is a coach that likes to work his players back into fitness, 100%. Uh, he, you know, last match, he was on the bench at home, but Wolf said in, in the press conference that there was no plan, no intention to even bring him on the field. He was just there because they, they had an, an extra seat and for him to just fill it up. So uh, hopefully, you know, Fagundes is worked back into the squad little by little, just like you said, Danny. So a good point there. Now, on the bench, we had Kip Keller, uh, which was, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a bit of a shock anymore, but it is interesting to see him. Uh, there because of his involvement with Austin FC too. He is a, a first team player though. He is on loan with the two teams, especially after the, you know he's been there since that mistake against uh, St. Louis. But Keller's you know one of those players that's working his way back, not from injury, but back into first team uh, first team game time. I guess you could say uh, he hasn't got it yet, but he's on the bench working his way back. Another name that a lot of fans really didn't expect to see in the in the squad list was uh, CJ Fodery. That was very interesting to see him there. Maybe, you know, we knew all along maybe that he wasn't going to get those minutes. But if it did happen, I mean, we were going to be happy for him. 
regardless. Uh, moving forward, we have Nick Lima, Fagundes, as we mentioned, Sofiane Jafal, Bersano, Hector Jimenez, Will Bruin, who we said came in, had a chance, he made it for himself, and David Rodriguez, who was the big announcement, man. He got that post, uh, shout out from Austin FC, saying that they uh, reached a, was a short-term loan agreement, something like that, that brought him up to the first team, but he didn't get any minutes, but it's good to know that Josh Wolf can pick some of these players up, travel with them, and if he needs to, if he needs to, he can drop a first-team striker like Maxi and say, you know what, if you want to be, you know, not training, not warming up, sitting on the ball whenever we're warming up for, for games, not interested at all. Okay, that's cool. Well, guess what? I'm going to drop you, and guess what? I'm going to bring up one of the young kids that actually looks hungry. So, interesting there. Interesting situation. Maxi didn't travel, but you call up David. I wonder if there's uh, something else there that uh, that we're not uh, being told from the Austin FC locker room. So, uh, I want to read a quote real quick, guys, from Josh Wolf on the match. And he says, this type of result galvanizes the team again. It's early in the season. We still have 20 plus games to go. We've got Open Cup coming. We've got Leaves Cup coming. Sorry, Leagues Cup coming. I've been in this league long enough to know you, if you win a few games, you're on the bottom to the playoffs or from the bottom of the playoffs to the top two or three in the division. So we've got to keep improving, keep building off good performances, and we need our top players to keep performing. As Josh Wolf on the match. And also there's another quote here from Wolf. It says, uh, I think anybody can be anybody in this league. We're fighting for our own issues. Other teams are fighting for their issues. We've been without four, five, six starters for a few games now, and it takes its toll. But it's next man up, and you got to find ways to keep pushing forward. Josh Wolf on the win. Danny Ben, starting off with you, made any reaction to these quotes from Josh Wolf? I mean, he's kind of flexing right there saying, yo, if you're if you're out here doubting, we still got 20 plus games. So he's kind of sending a bit of a shout to Bali's army. Go ahead, Danny. Bali's army. Bali's army. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, we still got a long way to go. A long way to go. You know, and I'm glad like, well, I'm not glad, but it's better for all these injuries and all this hectic stuff to happen in the beginning of the season than the end, you know. So maybe we could find Good our point. groove in the next couple of games and, you know, pick up from where we left off from last season. So let's just keep keep believing in the wolf, you know. And hopefully okay. hopefully we get Drucy back soon and get our best players back and make a big run in the US Open Cup. Because that's the main uh, trophy Bali wants now. So that will satisfy Bali's army. Yeah, Bali is is, is really uh, keen on that U.S. Open Cup. He's saying that, that we shouldn't even go for the MLS Cup anymore. We should just drop our tools. Season's over. We're done. It's over. We're out. Hey, so Kind of like Madrid did with La Liga to win Copa del <laughs> Rey, you know? You know what I'm saying? Hey, chill out, chill out. We're not there yet. We're not there yet, oh, mate. Okay. Eric. Uh, any uh, any thoughts from you, Eric, on these quotes from Josh Wolf? Uh, we did post this quote on Twitter, and it got some reactions from fans outside of the Austin FC community. We had a fan from LA Gal- I'm sorry, from LAFC. Ugh, I'm sorry, my my fault. Didn't mean to confuse those teams. A fan from LAFC. He said that coach embarrassed y'all in CCL. He's quick to call for his achievements, but he's not quick to call out whenever he messes up. Uh, Eric, your thoughts on uh, Josh Wolf kind of, you know, flexing his muscles there just a little bit. Uh, he, he's kind of like on on the on the topic that you and uh, I think uh, B were saying and, and the last part is that there's still a long season to go. Y'all, you know, you guys got to – Bali's living in the future. You guys are living in the present. You don't know. You know, if you don't know if you guys are going to go on a, on a beat and run from this point. 20-something games yeah. is a lot of games, a lot of weeks, a lot of months. Who knows what can happen? And that's the mentality of Wolf, and that's the mentality of you and uh, and B. And and it's a good mentality, but at the same time, I understand uh, Bali's reaction. And, and in my opinion, I'm going to be siding with Bali's army right now, man. Oh, well, all right, whatever, mate. But uh, I do want <laughs> my credit from you, Eric, because I did say that if SKC got a result from Seattle – why the hell can't Austin FC do it too? And Bali laughed at me. Bali said that I was lying to the fan base. And what happened, mate? We got a freaking result from them at their house in Lumen Field, brother. So uh, I want to get my credit from Bali. I want to get my apology from Bali. And I'm going to get it. 100% I'm going to get it. I don't care if I got to go knocking at his house at 3 in the morning. I'm going to get it, bro. I don't care if I got to slash his tires. I'm oh, getting shit. my apology, mate. 
All right, guys, uh, let's go on to, the, to uh, one of the next talking points that we have on the Top Life pod, and it's Finley. Finley, he joins the 50-50 MLS club. I did find it out. I'm sorry that I didn't have this stat ready to go at the beginning when I did mention it at first. He gets into the 50-50 club for his assist. So he already had the goals in the bag. He gets in there for the assist. So ultimately, the goal for Zardis was the one that got him in there because we have a tweet here from Kyle uh, Wilcom at Kyle Wilcom on, on Twitter. Uh, he says, a huge congratulations to Ethan Finley for becoming the newest member of MLS 50-50 club. 55 goals and 50 assists. He is the 26th player to reach the milestone. What an accomplishment. And we tagged Ethan Finley on the We Awesome TV Instagram story, and he actually shared that. So shout out to my J. Ethan Finley. He always, uh, he's always watching the uh, stories. So he follows a page. Funny guy, cool guy. Ethan Finley, out of, out of everybody, Ethan Finley follows We Awesome TV. I think that's so hilarious, but... Cool guy, Ethan. Uh, I do want to get y'all's thoughts on that. Actually, real quick, before I get y'all's thoughts, this is a quote uh, from Ethan himself. So, Danny Benz, get your take ready. Uh, Quote, Ethan says, I think seeing the ball hit the back of the net in these last few games has helped. It kind of gives us a little bit of belief and all and all the stuff that we have been doing earlier in the year. Maybe weren't creating the, the chances or at least creating the goals. And now these goals are coming. So Ethan Finley saying, you know what? Earlier it wasn't working out. But it's finally starting to flow. The ball is finally going into the back of the net. So, Danny Benz, your thoughts on Ethan in the 50-50 club and Ethan with these words at the end of the game. Well, that's a huge accomplishment for him. I think there's only, like, what, eight other players in that? 26. 26. Oh, 26. 26. 26. He out. is the 26th yeah. player. Okay, yeah. Well, that's a huge accomplishment for him. And just like he said, uh, I'm glad it's, we're seeing goals now because we went quite a while without seeing goals. And, you know, Ethan Finley is that guy. You know, I believe he should have started in the Western Conference uh, Finals last season. Oh, huge, you know, yes. You know, yes. because he did real good against, uh, dang, who did we knock out? Dallas, right? Dallas the and also finals. RSL. And also yeah. RSL. But even then, bro, but even then before that, sorry just to make this a uh, yeah, quick yeah. point. Ethan Finley in the season, he had five goals, six assists, or the other way around, six goals, five assists. He was a big... Yeah. Uh, contribution for for this team i remember whenever i was making the stats for um the end of the year who had the best contributions for austin fc ethan finley was consistent in uh, in a lot of those um categories i guess you could say but go ahead danny yeah i mean ethan finley i'm proud of him you know i'm glad he follows real austin tv and hopefully he keeps doing good you know gets more starts until i don't know if Dago comes back I don't, that's all I got to say, you know, just, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad he scored, you know, see more goals. I do want to so, say this also, mate, before I get uh, Eric's take on uh, Ethan Finley, a lot of fans on this Slack channel that I'm on, shout out to LDR, they're saying that this new formation system, the way that we're playing, you know, the new five at the back system, if we shift Drusy as striker, right, then it kind of makes Fagundes the bit of the a bit of uh, bit, you know he could could be one of the guys left off. You know what I'm saying? Because Ethan Finley's playing well, Rigoni's playing well, Ronin Redes is also playing well. So Diego Fagundes coming into this to this team to this new team necessarily, I guess you could say not not necessarily a new team, but you know what I'm saying. The the new way that we are playing, Fagundes, the competition is there for him, mate. And then they're saying putting Drusi at striker could have. More, all the talent that we have at the field at once, but that'll sacrifice, you know, Zardes and Maxi and Bruin, but people aren't really keen on them, I guess you could say. So, Eric, I want to get your take on everything going on right now with Ethan Finley and also uh, the uh, the take that uh, Fago coming back in might have more competition than he would expect now. Go ahead, Eric. That's off to, to Ethan Finley. And and what crazy thing is that uh, last week when I went to the game, uh, I was hearing, oh, who, who's gonna re, who's gonna go into that spot? Uh, Fagun is out. Redes is now out. Are we really gonna rely on Finley? Well, guess what? Finley is here and he broke records. And he, and you guys were I saw a crazy stat on the on the on the on the, on the game was that this is y'all's what tied longest losing streak. Yes, eight? yes, tied. Well, winless streak. Winless, winless streak. Winless. Eight game. Eight game winless streak. Everybody thought this was this was gonna be nine. Everybody was saying, oh, well, make it nine. Might as well be nine. Might as well not even go play. I mean, with the score predictions on the stories shares, 
I mean, there was people laughing, 3-0 Seattle, don't even get me started. I mean, come on, no belief in the team? I get it, it's first place Seattle, but if SKC was able to do it, I mean, just like I said, why why couldn't Austin? Go ahead, Eric. Exactly, exactly. He Not only did he break, uh, the, he's got into, he broke into the 50-50 club, but he also broke the rec, the winless streak of Austin MC. So that's, yeah. he, he got two birds and one stone. He killed two birds and one stone, which is great for him. And I, I know he's going to, you know, he came home and he's loving life right now. And he, he, he should start against Toronto to get to those topics. But uh, mm. performance. Yeah, that's very interesting, mate. Because Redes is also back. We didn't see Redes in this game because of the double yellow red card. But very interesting point that you make there, mate. I mean, Ethan Finley started against Toronto. I think I think so. We're, we're going to get to uh, Toronto here in a bit. I do want to go into the next talking point that we have on here, which is the the Zardes goal. I want to get into that just a little bit more than we did earlier. Zardes goal, first of the season. I have a question that I want to ask with the Zardes goal, and that's why it's one of the main talking points that I added onto the notes. And the question is, and I'm going to start off with you, Danny Benz. Does this goal silence the haters? Because... There was a lot of people criticizing, coming after Zardes, saying that he's on a high wage and he doesn't have any goal contributions. And then there was another side, a new wave of, of uh, Zardes supporters that came in and they said, hey, zip it, simmer down, quiet down. This is Zardes. He's here to stay. So my question is, does this goal silence the haters or does he need to do more? I'll start off with you, Danny. The haters are never going to be silent, bro. Okay. I think... Zardes, he, he still needs to do more, you know. He already won his, the starting job over Maxi. You know, Maxi's probably going to be out of the picture. But I think Zardes should do more. He needs to do more. He still hasn't signed the haters. And, of course, those people are saying they're quick to forget how much we struggled, you know, since freaking February, since the season started, with Zardes starting and him barely getting his goal. Hopefully, he could turn things around. And then he'll sign the haters. But for now, uh, I don't know. I don't think he's made up fully yet. I do want to say this, mate. We were chatting it up on the Slack, LDR. That LDR is absolutely elite. Slack channel is absolutely amazing. Uh, shout out to my G, Zach, at the North End Pod. He did bring out some numbers. And the numbers were, you know, they... Numbers don't lie, brother. Numbers don't lie. And the numbers pointed at the fact that on the field, we get more wins with Zardy starting than with Maxi. And that's interesting. You know, it's hard to believe. I know, especially after all the criticism on the slack Zardis has been getting. But I just, I, I wish I would have found that 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 exact number. But unfortunately, I don't have it here in, in front of me. I'm going to bring it up again on, on Twitter. I'm going to ask him for it. And we're going to talk about it tomorrow when this podcast drops. Because according to my Zach for the North End Pod, we're better on the field with Zardis than with Maxi, at least win-wise, points-wise, right? Link-up play, we've seen the graphs. We've seen the maps. Zardis has a poor link of play. Maxi is a bit better on that. But, you know, getting the wins, getting the actual points, Zardis is, is, is the guy that is uh, better for us, apparently. But, Eric, uh, I want to get your thoughts. Zardis, same question goes to you. Does he silence the haters with his goal? Before I get to that, you you reminded me, you said stats don't lie, of Ronaldo and his press conference. Las estadísticas nunca engañan. They don't. They don't. Uh, I see it. I see him performing more uh, to me on the pitch than than than, than Maxi, but he's just lacking that that ability to, to put the ball in the net. I saw like that that FC Dallas where he had the goal wide open, buries it. This game buried his header. Had two, could have had two goals going on to the next games and more and more and more. I I, I think that maybe. Now that he's got his first goal, he might have a lot of pressure off of him, which is very good. But we can never tell because who, who knows what's going to happen in the next game. But I think that his, when I see him play, he he's by himself a lot, a lot. When they give him the ball top, he has to hold it. All, like he was holding it against three three or four defenders of, of Seattle, and nobody was around him. So it's hard for him to create when he has nobody coming for him to receive the ball off of him. When he's trying to do that one two, so maybe there's a little bit too much criticism on him, but he always pulls out 100% effort every time I watch him play, which is you know, I talk to him too, not as much for Uruguay. 
hats off to him too, bro. Just like you said, hats off to him too, 100%, mate. So I want to go on to uh, the next talking point that we have on here, which is Radovanovic. We got to give him his praise. Uh, Radovanovic versus Seattle. What are your thoughts, boys? Real quick, uh, I want to start off with this question. Uh, then uh, what, are, what, what are your main thoughts on him? The fans are saying for the club to sign him as soon as possible. They're saying sign him up now, you know, get him into the club, get his signature on a piece of paper, wrap it up, put a bow on it, Radovanovic, to stay in Austin, not just a little loan. Uh, it is important to note he's on 600K. So I want to start off with you, Eric, back to back. Your thoughts on the fans calling, asking for the club to secure him for the long term. Go ahead, mate. I would back it. I would back him. I would back him. Death. Death is good. And I just, oh, man, I just want to see Ring back in midfield. I want to see Ring in the midfield, man. I want to see him in the midfield. If he, if it be Cascante, Leo, and, and Raul right there in the back, those three, and then you just put Ring in the midfield where he's supposed to be, man, it's going to be a whole different ball game. So I think that, you know, they should sign him. Not to, to like, who's going to be our starter, but more as in, let's get more depth. Because he showed he's a good class player yeah. over time, gets comfortable with the squad, and more depth. It's good. Interesting point that you hit on there, mate. Uh, I think maybe if he continues performances like this, he could challenge for a, a starting position, bro. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, just maybe. But before I go to Danny Benz, I want to read some comments from the Instagram post that we had. Uh, the Instagram post had the, the same question. What are your thoughts on Radovanovic's performance with the stats? 61 minutes played, two clearances, two interceptions, 74.1% pass accuracy, two out of five long balls, and four out of four aerial duels, 100% in the air. And we mentioned it earlier, saving a probably a goal chance from Herber, you know, taking it from his head really with his own head. Um, important uh, intervention there. But from the comments, the fans, happy, over the moon. We have Aaron Jimenez, 957. He said, solid, solid, solid. With his performance, I'm hoping they keep him full time. We had Franken Baller said, he really did stand out last night. Depth we need in the back line. Uh, Clay Ted Martin, he said, what we need. And then let's see some more fans. Uh, we need him. Sign him. Big body. Intimidating force. And uh, one more comment. It says, uh, his long passes are on point. He's always communicating. Wins the aerial battles. Deceptive speed. He's a huge help. And if Wolf will play a four back line, he'll really stand out. And that comment got 20 likes. So, Danny Benz, what are your thoughts on Mr. Radovanovic? Radov- ah. What are your thoughts on Radovanovic's performance last night? Yeah. And the fans wanting him to be signed ASAP. Well, at this point, um, why not? We should just sign him, see how he does. A couple games, you know, bring him in, take out Tarek, whatever his name was. The guy who fucked up against... Uh, Violet. In Champions League, yeah. Get him out, bring this guy in, because he played real good. And hopefully he gets another opportunity against Toronto and Chicago, too. And... Sorry. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens, you know. But I think I think that guy's real solid. He played real good yesterday. Hundred percent, mate. Go ahead. He played real good. Uh, was very. Uh, um, uh, he played real good in the in the air. You know, he yes. won, he won, he wins balls right there. So that's what we need. Like, but I want to agree with what Eric said. I want to see Alex Ring back in the midfield. I don't want to see him defense. You know, I want to see. Uh, Number, I don't know how to say his name, so I'm just gonna say number 66. How do you say Rado. his name? You can, you can just call him Rado. You can just call Rado him Rado Vanovich. Rado Vanovich. That's, yeah. that's Rado actually Vanovich. fun to say, mate. It's 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 fun to say. I, I gotta now, practice it. Eric did give me slack. He did give me slack because when we signed him, when we you know when we got his loan deal finalized, Eric gave me slack because I said that he could be our Vidich. He was saying, "Be serious, come on." <laughs> He's not going to be a vintage. And look, look now. He's giving him praise, saying that the club should sign him. It's funny how the tables turn, mate. Thoughts on that, Eric? Is he a vintage, though? Is he? I mean, it's one game. Come on, relax. I gave him praise, but come on, relax. relax. It's against Seattle, mate. Top of the league. Top of the West. Well, they were top of the West. Not anymore. Calma. Well, I'll give him. You can give me all the slack you want at the end of the season if he has great performances week in and week out. Not just one performance, man. All right? He's our vintage. Done deal. He's our vintage. Sign him. Let's go. Keep it moving. Uh, 600K? I think it's all right. Uh, it is what it is. At this point, it looks like we're just 
giving everybody money, so might as well give him his at this point. Yeah, but on the money conversation, real quick, just super quick. I mean, somebody really has to get that in, and they just have to organize that. That's what I'm trying to say. They're trying to. They need to really get that in line. I mean, when the numbers came out, you saw some names that were making just an insane amount of money based on the contribution that they have on the field and how things have pl- have, have played out. But I do want to say this. Brofa made a great point. He said that if the, if the numbers came out at the beginning of the season, nobody would be caring about it. Nobody would, would be caring about it because when Zardes was signed, everybody – well, not everybody. A lot of the fan base was hyped about him, saying that he would get 10 goal contributions or maybe 10 goals himself. Unfortunately, it's not looking like it's going to be on track for that. It could change, especially after last night in uh, Seattle. But maybe fans looking a little bit too much into the numbers. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, I want to move on from Radovanovic. Uh, he did have a really good performance. The fans are, are happy with him. So big ups, big ups to him. Uh, and the next thing that we're going to talk about is Cascante's injury, lads. Uh, he was out for a concussion protocol. So it's not really an injury, I guess you could say. Or It is an injury. It's important, 100%. Uh, concussion protocol, it's a bit different because it's not like, you know, an injury that you receive to the foot or the knee or the shin or something and you feel the pain, you see it right then, right then and there. Concussions can sneak in. They can sneak up on you. They might not be evident right then and there, but you always got to be watching. You got to make sure to keep track of that. And apparently that's what happened with Julio Cascante. Now, on Twitter, on Instagram, I think he maybe even in the Austin FC Facebook group, a lot of the fans were confused with the situation because they were upset that the Austin FC allowed Julio Cascante to continue playing against FC Dallas after taking a hit, which was what caused Julio Cascante to be sidelined for the Seattle game. That's what Joshua said. You know, he took a hit. Uh, he was laying there for uh, for a bit. Uh, me, myself, I thought that Julio Cascante maybe looked like he went out unconscious for a couple seconds. Maybe he blacked out just three or five seconds. Then he came back. He was up on his feet and everything was good. But later on, you know, not necessarily later on, but when the injury uh, report came out, we see that Cascante is sidelined. And we're like, okay, well, what's going on? Why did he even finish that game? When did they start seeing symptoms? Josh Wolf comes out in the press conference for Seattle and really clears it up. He says that um, Julio Cascante was experiencing symptoms during the week. So that's when he was sidelined. And they're just taking care of him uh, following protocols. And that's why he didn't play against Seattle. Uh, fortunately for us, though, Radovanovic, who replaces Julio, comes in and does a phenomenal job. So uh, I want to get your thoughts, starting off with you, Eric. Um, Julio Cascante concussion injury concussion protocol uh personally i'm happy that the club is taking care of it the way that that they should these are trained professionals this is what they do this is their job and i'm sure that they're handling the, handling it the way that they should right of course it's a serious matter when it comes to your head and your, and your brain and concussion it's a, it's a serious matter because it could affect you in the longer run but Thanks. uh going to that thought uh you know you guys had a debate last part about him getting cooked well, what if it was that? What if it was the concussion that he had in the game that altered him during the match with all the pressure? And what if it was that? You know, you never know. You don't know the truth. You know, you know, you know what's going on behind the scenes. But what if it was that hit that he let, had him laying down for a few minutes on the ground? Not that he was going to get subbed out, but what if it was that, guys? What do you guys think? Uh, I'm not sure, I mate. Mean, I mean, he did take a hit to the head. So, I mean, that's what Wolf is saying. That, you know, that's that's the thing that got him sidelined out. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, just going back to the to the main idea of it, you know, I'm I'm happy that the club is, um, you know, that they that he put him to the side. They're taking care of it the way that they should, and hopefully that we see him back on the pitch ASAP, bro. Because Julio Cascante is important for this club, and looks like he's uh, the captain also whenever he's on the field. And Drusi is not there. So, Danny Benz, real quick, your thoughts on Julio Cascante? Well. I'm going to have to say that the club should take their time with Julio Cascante because I remember in the, I think it was the first game, or was it the training where he where Stuvrax and he stepped on him? Oh, yeah. I yeah. Remember that. You remember that? I remember yeah. that. And he had the so, gash in his head. Yeah. So now he has a concussion protocol. So the club should take the time with him. You know, we have number 66 uh, to back him up anyway. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to say his name. Radovanovic. Bro. You're good. R- Rado, Radovanovic. Radovanovic. Yeah, we have yeah. Radovanovic, bro. I want to see him more in the pitch, like yeah. compared to uh, Cascante, has not 100. percent You know. Yeah. 
That's a good point, man. I will give you that 100%. Now, uh, real quick, want to talk about Toronto. They are up next Saturday, match day 13, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it is match day on Saturday, though, at home. Toronto coming to this game last place in the East with 13 points and 13 matches to play, if I'm not mistaken. We could check up on that real quick. Uh, they have some really good players on their team, though. Sean Johnson, great goalkeeper, Bernadeschi, and Insigne. Important to note, Bernadeschi has three goals while Insigne has one. And honorable mention, of course, to Michael Bradley, a player that's been in there for a while, been in really in the in the U.S. men's national team bubble and for a while, especially when his dad was the coach, Bob Bradley from the uh, USA. And Michael Bradley, you know, he's been around the world. I remember he played in uh, Serie A for a bit. He played in Roma, right? He played in, in Roma, if I'm not mistaken. Was it in Roma? I think he did. He played in the Serie A. I think he did play in, in, in the city. Uh, I'm going to check on that real quick. Uh, but I want to get your score predictions. Toronto, maybe not coming into the best of form versus Austin FC. And we're a bit on the, you know, we're a bit on the rise, I guess you could say. So, Danny Benz, real quick, your score prediction for that game on Saturday. Oh, that's going to be tough. Um, I'm going to say 2-0 Austin FC. Okay, I like that. I say Zardes scores another one and Finley scores again. Zardes another one and Finley yeah. scores again? Okay. Yes, sir. Lightning going to strike twice, bro. Okay, all right, all right. Eric, uh, score prediction, mate. Uh, it's going to be a tough one, but, I mean, seeing that the record is that they're not in great form, I'm going to probably say a, a, a nice little one to Austin. Okay, wins. I like it. I like it. Predicting wins. I love it. I love it. The optimism here is welcomed 100%, mate. Uh, let's see. Against Toronto. <sighs> let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Let me see. Let me give you a good score prediction. Good score prediction. After everything that we discussed, everything going into this game, the way that we played against Seattle, team looked to be inspired. That locker room had a lot of smiling faces, even though it wasn't just for the camera. Zardis finally got his goal. Weight lifted off his shoulders. Austin FC wins this game, guys. It's written all over it. Austin FC wins this game 2-1. 2-1 or 2-0. 2-1 or 2-0. We could concede late because Josh Wolf is a big fan of making weird subs at, at, at the end. And it kind of makes the team get disbalanced just a little bit. But some of those subs, he has to make them. Let's also be real. Some of those subs, he has to make them because some players might not be fit 100% to go 90, which is uh, something that, that needs to be worked on, I guess you could say. But... Uh, some of the subs, though, we do have to note, we do have to say, because we have talked about it off air, some of the subs have been a bit of a concern for Austin FC. So we could close this game out 2-0, or it'll end 2-1. But we can't sleep on the Toronto players. They are very talented, and they could nick a goal at any time. Any time. Boys, any thoughts on uh, Toronto? Mm, is this our first time playing them I in club think, history? I think officially, yeah. I think we we met them... In oh, preseason, preseason. Yeah. in preseason, but officially, I think this is the first time, mate. Yeah. All right. Graham, Mike, Eric? What are you, you saying, I'm saying 1-0, Daddy Benz is saying 2-0. You said 2-1. Or 2-0. Oh, or, no, but let's go to 2-1. What is it going to be, the score? Is it going to be like Seattle was 2-0 and then they score? Or is it, is it a catch-up game? Is it a comeback? Or is it, what do you, what do you think it's going to be? We're on the front foot the whole game. We're, yeah foot on the gas the whole game I, I i just said earlier i said wolf makes some wacky set wa some wacky subs and possibly allows toronto to um, score their goal like against seattle a lot of people were saying you know uh you take rado off and i also noticed it you take rado off you take rado off and then seattle you know boom again chance after chance after chance rado was playing fantastic but you know he can't go 90 minutes yet uh, the fitness might be an issue with him still right now, but 60 minutes, an, an, an hour was a pretty good shift for him against uh, Seattle. One of the top teams in, well, used to be the top team in the West. They are one of the top teams in the West and a big team in MLS overall. So we could see some wacky subs by Josh Wolf. He is known to do some of those things. And Toronto could nick a goal a minute 84, 80, 75. But Austin goes up early in this in this in, in this in this uh in this game. Before minute twenty, we score one goal. Before minute twenty, we're up, mate. Oh, who scores? That I don't know. Come on, bro. I don't know. It, it, 
right now, the way that things are going right now, we're we're scoring from all over. Zardes is scoring, Redes Gallag- is scoring, Finley is scoring, Gallagher. You know? Gallagher, hundred percent. Maybe even Lunkovic gets a goal, maybe because he's been he's been pushing up a lot, oh, yeah. get getting shots off out of nowhere. We could see a banger goal from him. You never know right now, mate. You never know right now, and it's a good spot to be in if you're a, an Austin FC fan because we're trending up right now. We're trending up, and the boys look to be inspired even without the best players. That's that's key right there, without the best players. So um, without skipping a beat, I want to get into the European segment. We got a couple minutes because we are trying to catch. The Liga MX semifinal between Chivas and America, Super Clásico de México. I'm a Chivas fan. Danny Bans, what about you, mate? Hey, Chivas all the way, baby. Chivas. Y el América que. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Eric, what about you, mate? Um, I'm neither America or Chivas. I'm a Cruz Azul fan, but I mean, I, I already know I'm predicting that America is going to destroy Chivas. I don't think so, mate. I think no, Chivas I think is so. going to. Chivas is going to hold themselves uh, to a high standard, and I think we play in, in El Acron first home stadium. So Chivas is going to Chivas is going to get the dub at home and tie in the Azteca, or Alexis, it could be a tie here. Alexis Vegas two goals today tonight. Alexis Alexis Vegas, Alexis Vegas to Austin FC. All right, hey, I'll, hey, bring him in, baby. Bring him. Bring him home. Hey, bring him. Bring him. Bring him, bro. Please. Alexis Vega DP to Austin FC. Sheesh. I would love that, bro. Oh. Bro, you know how many fans will gain more from how many Austin jerseys? Area, bro? How many jerseys would sell? Alexis Vega, picture that, Danny, real quick. Alexis Vega wearing the verde and black. Picture wow. that, mate. Picture I'll that. To, I'll go to every game, bro. Eee, let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get into the top flight European segment now. Champions League is really the only thing that we're gonna talk about because there's nothing else to really discuss. Uh, I have a lot of ex explaining to do i'm lucky i'm lucky tonight that brian is not here i'm lucky tonight that bali is not here because they have a lot of things that they want to say to me and i get it i get it you know rightfully so a lot of the fans on twitter vanilla mexican a lot of the listeners of top flight came out and they made memes about me saying like yo this you yo this you you know saying whenever i was not afraid of city all those tweets they came back to help me i get it 100 percent Fans were saying that I was humbled. People were saying that I need to be, uh, I need to be smarter next time and not talk about City before the game ended. And maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. People came after me, mate. And for once, I felt what it felt like to be Bali. People coming after you like that, I felt what uh, it felt like to be Bali, mate. Hey, props to you because um, you actually showed up in the podcast. Unlike, <laughs> unlike Brian, whenever Real Madrid knocked out Chelsea, he went into hiding. So. Props to you, H. Appreciate you, mate. Appreciate you, mate. Now, uh, real quick, some important stats that were brought to brought to us by uh, my G, Eric, the topic and stat contributor of the top flight. Vini created zero chances against Man City. That's a huge credit to Kyle Walker, who absolutely locked him down. Uh, we will see a World Cup winner and a Champions League winner in one season, either Lautaro with Inter or Julian Alvarez with City. That's very interesting there. Uh, Madrid registered one shot not on target in the whole first half while Man City had 13. Ugh. Madrid has still never won at the Etihad. Three losses and two draws? Seriously? Huh. Not acceptable. Need to step that up. Really good in- really good stat there. Appreciate you, Eric. Uh, Pep told Real Ferdinand, quote, believe me, we beat them two years ago. We will beat them again. End of quote. Pep confident, telling Rio Ferdinand. Maybe Rio Ferdinand, a Real Madrid fan? A lot of people were saying that he was getting a little bit too excited whenever Vini scored that goal. But uh, moving forward, we have Grealish has created 35 chances in this season's Champions League campaign. That's the most of any English player once records began in 2003-2004. Damn, big ups to Mr. Gucci, the face of Gucci, Jack Grealish. Uh, moving on, <laughs> Pep becomes the third manager to join the 100 Champions League wins club alongside Sir Alex and Ancelotti. Interesting, Ancelotti. Doing it in 30 to 31 games less than both of them. Man City are one game away from winning the league, one game away from winning the FA Cup, and one win away from the Champions League, meaning they could be the second English team to win a treble alongside United, 98-99 season. And last but not least, Madrid suffered their joint worst defeat in the Champions League, matching their 4-0 loss to Liverpool 
14 years ago. Danny Benz, I see that sad look on you, mate. Out of all that that I just read right now, what sticks out to you the most? Kyle Walker, bro. Kyle Walker had Vinny on lock. I don't know. I don't know what was going on with the Madrid locker room. Man City just started. They started strong. Like they were just on our ass the whole first half. Shots after shots after shots. Our midfield looked dead, bro. It looked like it's time for, uh, I don't want to say, but for Modric and Cruz to probably move on, bro. Like, uh, but it's tough because they're so good. It's just, it was a, I was watching that game at home, right? In my room. And I was wearing my pink 2014-15 Real Madrid jersey. Why? Because I wore the same jersey last year whenever Madrid came back against City. So I was hoping that would happen. As soon as I saw Bernardo Silva score that second goal, I was like, it's done, bro. It's like, done. It's done. And then the third one. And then the fourth one, I was like, uh, I was sending a voice message to someone. And then, like, I think I was showing him my, my Fast and the Furious movies collection. Because, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, the new one just came out. The new one just came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, like. I look at the TV and I see Julio Alvarez score. I'm just like, oh my god! Like I, just, I recorded that in the voice message. So I was like, fuck, bro! Like, it was bad, man. Oh, it was 4-0. bad. Four yeah. zero. I will say this: I was, I was, I was taking heavy copium when I was watching this game because whenever it was one nil, and it, the the first goal, bro, it wasn't just a goal. It was a complete run around, mate. That first goal. Gave me Barca vibes, dude. And I hate that I'm saying that because Pep was a coach for Barca and they were dominant during that period. I will give him credit. But it just gave me Barca vibes, bro. Like, they just danced around us. They opened us up like a freaking piece of candy and ate us up like if we were a Reese's Buttercup, bro. Literally. And we shut down Holland. We we probably shut down KDB this second leg. But it seems like we forgot about everybody else. We forgot about John Stones. We forgot about freaking Kyle Walker. We forgot about freaking Bernardo. We forgot about Julian Alvarez. I mean, maybe even that that goes to me. That goes to me. Maybe I should be taking my own advice what I'm dishing out right now. But uh, I want to get Eric's thoughts on this, mate. Um, obviously, everything that was just read right now, Real Madrid go out. It, it hurt. Uh, people are gonna come for me too. I saw a football critic go for me too. Yeah. Oh, what did he tell you? What did he tell you? Football critic. Uh, was, uh, he had posted of, of a little thing crying, and it, it was funny. But man, just 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 to watch that game, rushing home from work, trying to see the game, trying to trying to see. You know what? You know what? H, it's your fault. It's your fault. You made me go. But you know what? He's right. This is Madrid. Why are we scared of City? He's right. Why does Chelsea and United and 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 all these other English teams fear them before the game started? And I was on your side, and guess what? I'm sorry, mate. The same thing that always goes through our heads happened. And you were the one who made me change my mind. And guess what? You jinxed it. I told you the messages. You're going to jinx this. You're going to. I don't to think I did. I don't think I did. You are that Madrid fan who hypes everything up because almost Madrid. Because we have all the trophies. Guess what? Embarrassed and humbled, mate. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stop crying that night. <laughs> uh, real quick, one of the points that I kind of brushed over earlier before Eric went off on this incredible rant right now uh, was the fact that whenever it was 1-0, I was like, well, at least it's just one. If we can get to the half, if it's just 1-0, that's, that's pretty good. And then when it was 2-0, I was like, well, at least it's just two. At least it's just two. And when it was 3-0, bro, I was like, man, get end this game. End it. Throw in the towel. We got outclassed. We got outclassed. And Bali was saying, and I want uh, Danny Man's thoughts on this. Bali was saying that this is a wake-up call, not only for Madrid, not only for the EPL, but a wake-up call for the world, saying that City is here to stay. You know, they're not a banter club anymore. You can't joke on them anymore saying, oh, they have no history. Oh, they just buy players. I mean, you know, they do have the oil money. But they've been smart with it. They've done it right. We gotta, we we gotta be real. We gotta be real. And even I say, investigate city. And you know, what has come from those investigations? Nothing has come from them, mate. So, are they are they doing something right? Is this a wake up call for the world of football, telling them, yo, this team is scary. 
this team is here to stay. And this is only the beginning. Danny Benz, go ahead. Uh, like H, you even said that you told Bali, like, that's a bad take. Come on, bro. City is here to stay. This is their first season with Erling Holland. Their first season with Erling Holland. Look, look, they might treble. I have a question for you, Eric. Is this, if they treble, is this a team better than the 98, 99 100%. Manchester United? 100%. 100%. I can, I can ask for it. 100%. Go ahead, Eric. 100%. Why do you think I fear this? Why do you think I fear this? Because this team, I mean, yes, we, we got the Orlais and the Kings and the Kings and, and whatever. I can't speak and, and Schmeichel and everybody. But this team, it, like, it can't even compare City Centurions when they made 100 points in a league season. That, that team was scary. Now, this team beats that City team. And that, te- that City team with 100 points was not that long ago. Yeah. This team is downright scary. It's too but, scary, bro. But you want you gotta understand that at the end of the day, this is still little city. They're not ever gonna be compared to the Liverpools and the Uniteds. One European trophy, good, good for you, cool, whatever. But to have that treble is what is it's just that's we've been so bad for so long that that's what we're holding on to. Like Bali's and his invincibles with the gold trophy. Oh, but you don't you don't have a gold trophy. You don't have yeah. a gold trophy, B. Hey. Hey. Hot take? Hot take? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know why people use the word hot take. It's just a way to call it, I guess you could say. But maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe I'm by myself on this. Let me know if y'all join me on this sentiment, on this thought, on this on this feeling. But I would rather have three back-to-back Champions League than a treble. That is what it Facts. is. Hey, that's consistency, bro. So. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency. I w- I'd rather take three Champions League, three P back-to-back-to-back than a treble. But, but... This is going to be a three-peat for, for EPL titles for City. And a treble? Oh, my God. Like, that's unheard of. That's unheard of. You know of. what? That that actually speaks volumes of how poor the EPL is. How poor <laughs> the EPL is for the first league, for the first spot. You can say that they're good at racing for, for top four. But when we're talking about champions, I mean, City's been miles clear. I mean... Danny Benz, you were there laughing. To me, it speaks it speaks volumes. It speaks yeah, volumes, I mean, mate. It shows, it shows how Man City invests in their club compared to Manchester United. Manchester yeah. United were just splashing money. <laughs> boom, 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 boom to yep. Pogba, Lukaku, Lukaku Maria, again. Alexis Maria, Sanchez. Yeah. Like, City, they play their cards right. Probably because of the coach. Probably because of Pep. He was like, hey, I want this player. I want this player. He's going to fit in my system. And United didn't even have a proper coach till now. So... Probably that that that's what explains with the dominance of City with the EPL, and then Chelsea, come on, bro. Chelsea just spent six hundred million for not for for what for nothing to win what like two three games for the rest of the season. Hey, they could come back next season, bounce back. Joe Felix, they could keep a Mudrik. You never know, mate. They only have the super EPL. Frank, super Frank, super Frank. No, they got super. they got Poch now. Oh, you're right, you're right. Oh, yeah, Poch, break, yeah, yeah. Recent news though, recent yeah. news. They did get Poch. Yeah, that's true, mate. Good, good uh, call on that. Really good call on that. But let's see. Was there any other thoughts that we have on this Real Madrid game? I mean, historic loss for us. I know that they're gonna r- remember it for a, a long time. They might even make movies from this. They're gonna make maybe Netflix series from this because Man City is gonna rub it in our faces for a while. I just know it. I got a feeling, brother. And you know, City, big ups to them. Uh, I do have this this one homeboy. His name's Michael. He's been a City fan for a very long time. So if you're one of those fans that has gotten to see the rise of a team like City, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. But just like we, I think it was mentioned by Eric or by Danny, if they get one Champions League, you still got 14 more to go to catch up, mate. No, 13. So 13. We, we might be out. We might be out this season, but we will rise. And real quick, before we end the pod, Jude... Jude Bellingham is coming soon. And uh, Danny Benz, you had an interesting tweet. You said, I'm sick of y'all. If we sign all these players that Real Madrid is targeting, (laughs) or actually, what'd you say? Okay, so you tweeted something about, you quote tweeted something and you tagged me and Primo about this article about 
Real Madrid is signing Alfonso Davies, yes. Kylian Mbappe, and Drew yes. Bellingham this summer. Bro, if yeah. that happens, I'll buy you and Primo the brand new home kit, the, the Real Madrid home kit. Okay. But you know why I'm saying that? Okay. Because it's not going to happen, bro. Okay. It's Eric? not going to happen. Eric, thoughts on this? Do you uh, want in on it or do you side with uh, Danny Benz? Now I had a, that was one of the notes. That's crazy. That was one of the notes for the next pod. That's crazy. But there are, there's also more names. And I'm only, only, only age knows there's more names, Danny. I'm sorry. There's more names. Give us one. Give us one. There's two strikers. Oh, I actually just saw oh, the, the, the French guys, right? Oh, French? Please don't say Julian Alvarez, bro. Mm. Uh oh. Mm-mm. Say it, Eric. Who says, Eric. Who says this? Harry? Harry? Harry Kane is on the list. I don't mate. want Harry Kane, bro. <sighs> He's no, already okay. 30. Okay, okay, okay. You really got to think about this one, though. It's good. You really got to think about this one, though. He is 30, but he's he's already made. He's already a made striker. You do run the risk of him not integrating into the squad. Hazard. Well. Ha- Hazard was a Hazard made. Like has, but Hazard also struggled with hella injuries with the plate in his foot. Remember that? Harry to Real Madrid? Oh, bro. Why? Harry? Why? We'll give Benz one more Harry? Harry? Bro, we have Andri coming in 2024, dude. Yes, mate, but that's next you, year. Need, as next year, need, bro. Yes, but we need results well, ASAP, mate. And he's literally 13 years old, brother. <laughs> bro, he's, he's a kid. He's, he's he, bro. This guy's not even 15. He, he's Brazilian, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's Brazilian, bro. He's gonna fit in with Vini and Rodrigo. All right, all right. You know what? All Go right. ahead, build your fantasy team, bro. I'm sick of all it. Right. But if, right. if we sign those three players, you and Primo are going to get that jersey from me, bro. All right. Mar- hey, everybody heard this. Listeners heard it. Eric, you also heard it too, mate. Is there anything y'all can add on the Champions League game, boys, or in Europe overall? Ancelotti said he's probably going to stay. and That's not good. <sighs> that's going to be talked about Sunday. B and Bali will be back, and we'll get yeah. into it then, boys. Uh, hey, it's been – go ahead, bro. I, I, got, I got one last thing to say. Real Madrid season was su- successful. You know why? Because we finally won Copa del Rey. All right, that's the only that's the only trophy I wanted this year, to be honest. Eric, be honest, was it bro. a successful season? Real Madrid successful season? You know, uh, yeah, Club World Cup, Copa del Rey, and what was the other one that we won? The Super Cup, no? No, we didn't win that. <laughs> oh yeah, Barcelona, Barca Super Spankos. Cup, the uh, España. Este ganamos la Copa del Rey, uh, Club World Cup. Oh, so yeah, the Super Cup, the, the UEFA Super Cup. The UEFA oh, Super yeah, Cup. Oh, yeah, UEFA Super Cup. That's yeah. UEFA Super Cup, yeah. Yeah, good season. Treble, yeah. treble. <laughs> <laughs> That's a treble, mate. The, those, what? Those small trophies. That's a, that, hey, Arsenal would be proud to win those trophies, all right? So many teams will be proud to win trophies that yeah. Real Madrid does, mate. And I said this earlier today in the group chat. I said, because Bali was flaming me. I said, Bali, you know what, bro? You know what? Real Madrid's poor season is another team's successful season. And that's just the standards that we hold ourselves to. But we'll see on the Eric. Confused? That's what B says all the time. <laughs> well, he does. Uh, oh, you know what? Right? Yeah, he, 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 he did say that once. He does say that a couple of times. You're right. I guess B and I share that same thought. But that's all I had to say on that. Uh, this has been episode 99. Appreciate y'all tuning into another episode of the Top Fly Podcast. Chivas game is about to start a minute away, so we finish right on time. Uh, have a good night, y'all. And this will All be right. out Friday. We'll see you then. later.